take up your liberty. This is a hard one for me tonight. Uh, been coming here for a few weeks. Got some good teachers, a good preacher. I love to come to Sunday school. Just Wanda, Lindsay and I, Linda, Sunday, just Gary, and then all the guest speakers. And, and now here I am. And I've uh, uh, fallen a bunch of people I don't want to follow. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, uh, Paul said, uh, this is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the chief. Amen. He wasn't just a sinner, he was the chiefest of sinners. Uh, he didn't have me as a contestant with him back when he was sinner because Amen. I was, uh, Gary and I were a couple of the better sinners around. We were to give him some competition. He, he shot at people and killed them. I shot at people and killed them. I was shot at. I was shot down. I was beat up. I've been drunk, I've been uh, messed up all over, but he can only ride a horse. I can ride a horse, but he can't fly a helicopter. <laughs> so I would say to be a chiefest, I'm, I'm chiefest. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that. <laughs> so, anyway, I want to, uh, my presentation tonight is not a preaching presentation. It's a teaching presentation. I want to, uh, give you a couple interesting tidbits on the Bible, give you a couple of what's and why's, and I just encourage each one of you, anytime you're studying the Bible and you see something, you say, why? Why did this happen? Why did he do this? Because everything in there, from the time God created the world in his mind, all the way through up till now, he already knew what he was going to do. It was all created in his mind before he did it. Uh, uh, let's see, what do I want to start with? Let's start with 2 Timothy 3.16. I always use scriptures. I want you to see it in the Bible because I don't want you to take my word for anything. That way, if you don't like what I say, I can say, take it up with God. He's the one that, he's the one that said it, not me. 2 Timothy 3.16. All scriptures. Is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. That says all scripture, all. We have churches out here that are uh, Old Testament churches. We have churches out here that are New Testament churches. We've got churches out here that's invented their own testament, which is kind of a a parody of all of them. But my Bible says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means God breathed. That means it's God's word. And he, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So this word is God. Amen. It's not just inspired. He didn't get a couple of people. Second Peter says that uh, the men, a holy man of old wrote as they were inspired by God. Uh, God breathed. So uh, the Bible is laid out in pretty simplistic form, if you want to think about it, and that's what I want to go over to. Now I want to show you, I want to give you a couple of things on the Bible. I want to show you why it's important to study. All scriptures given by inspiration of God is profitable. If you read one scripture in the Bible and you don't understand it, or you say, well, it says here to do this, but it says over here to do this, there's a conflict. The conflict is not in the word, Conflict is in your understanding of the word. Amen. That's right. So then you watch. You've got to hear say, God, what did you mean? So how do we get it? Turn to Ephesians 4 11. Ephesians 4 11. You there? Who's got it? Amen. Read it to me. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Okay, he gave some apostles 
some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Keep going. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Keep going. Till we all come in unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. And then it tells us how do we get it. Read on to the next verse. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carry about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. All right. We're going to be tossed anymore to and fro. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some. I'm going to say some things tonight. Some of you are going to jump on this. You're going to say, I absolutely love what you're saying. Others just going to say, I don't believe the thing that you're saying, you're told out you're wrong. And others say, well, I might take it or leave it. But what I encourage you all to do is go back and study the Bible. Because anything I say up here tonight, the whole intent of it is to tell you about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. No salvation without the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So don't think that I'm getting off on some tangent here because every scripture in the Bible is going to direct you to Jesus. And I'm going to draw it on the board for you in a minute and, and show you. So, not going to be tossed to and fro by every wind of God. Jesus was out on the boat. This is one of the little tidbits I'm going to give you. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to give you tidbit one instead of two. Tidbit one is when God had the Bible written. The Old Testament was the promise. It was the blueprint. It was the layout of what was going to come. And when he told Moses to build the tabernacle in the wilderness, he told him four times. It's the only time in the Bible he ever told somebody four times to do something. He says, build it exactly the way I told you to in the wilderness. Because that tabernacle was the picture of Jesus Christ. Everything in the tabernacle is a picture of Jesus Christ. This whole Bible is a picture of Jesus Christ. When put together. So, be no more tossed, no more to and fro by the winds of doctrine. Jesus was out on the ship. And the storms came up. And the winds came up. And the waves came up. And the disciples got out scared. And they said, you got to do something. What did he do? He said what? Be still. Peace. Be still. Now, what he wrote in the Bible in the Old Testament was for Israel in the physical, in the flesh. What he told them to do, they had to do in the flesh. We do the same thing in our Old Testament, except we do it in our spiritual man. We don't have to leave Egypt and walk for 40 years through the desert to get there, but spiritually in the Bible and the study, we fight the same fights, we step in the same places, we say the same prayers, we have the same problems they did in our spiritual man. You understand that? Mm -hmm. you, so we got two people here. We got the fleshly man, which we talked about this morning, and the spiritual man. <clears throat> Jesus on the boat, the winds came up, and he said, peace. And they died down. Mm -hmm. But then, what did he say the winds were here? Read and tell, what was that? We'd be lost no more to and fro. That speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together in combat compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working and the measure of every part make an increase of the body to the edifying of itself in love. Okay, needed to back up one. Going to be tossed to and fro by every what? Wind of doctrine. You see the winds in the natural for Jesus were the winds and the storms of the world because that was their physical thing. Today we're tossed by the winds of doctrine. Yes. Winds in the Bible represent doctrine. Mm -hmm. So all we've got to do is say, in the name of Jesus, peace. Mm -hmm. And we, what are those doctrines? Moral doctrines, church doctrines. Because the reason we have denominations is because they have too many doctrines. 
And this wave comes at me and says, you need to be saved. Once saved, always saved. This one comes at me and says, no, you can lose your salvation. This one says you've got to be baptized. This one says you've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. This one says, if you sin one time after you're saved, you're going to hell. This one says, once saved, always saved. So I get saved as a 10-year-old kid. Just live life like I want to live. And make it to heaven in spite of myself. Based on that doctrine. We see all of these doctrines come to us. Yes. We're tossed to and fro by doctrines. But we have the authority through Jesus. It's a hey doctrine. We have to doctrine. Slow down. Stop. Peace. Mm -hmm. Be still. You understand that? Yes. So what they go through in the natural, we go through in the physical. Or spiritual, excuse me. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what the other one was. I'll let you look it up. Because it says, what? The winds and the waves. waves. What do you think the waves are? It tells you in the Bible. Revelation 21 says, I saw new heaven, new earth, and who city? Paraphrasing. And there was no more sea. That word sea, there's going to be sea, there's going to be water, there's going to be lakes. That sea, if you look it up, has to do with crowds and people. There's no more sea to toss us to and fro. No more coming at us, no more waves, taking this this way, taking this that way. Everything that's going on, we can say, be still, and we can overcome those waves of adversity. What are they? Well, Gary and I had a life before we got saved. And the people will come to us, or they'll come to us, they'll come behind our back and tell everybody in the world what we were like 30, 40 years ago. They're going to come to us and say, you can't be a preacher. I knew you back when you were doing this. When you were doing this. Yeah, I know you. You knew when you cooked. I knew when you drank. I knew when you did it this and that and you were fighting you were yelling you were screaming everything that they can come at you with they're going to come at you all we've got to do is we don't have to point to them we can point to our ears say be still we don't want to listen to that and if they come at us and Satan comes at us and starts stopping all of these things then we're being tossed to and fro by the winds and by the doctrines and by the sea. Hmm. Those waves of the people. Don't put up with the people. They're not in church. They're not heading for heaven. They don't have a vision in mind. Don't let them tell you where you're going. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So everything that Jesus <coughs> said was a principle that he was fulfilling. Peace, be still. Let me just ask you a couple questions here. Uh, book was written over a period of about 1500 years from about 1400 BC to 180 covered a period of 5000 years how many authors in the Bible anybody know 24. about 44 there's 44 confirmed but there's a book or two, chapters in Psalms and others, where they say, we're not sure that David wrote this. And it could be another author here or there. But don't let the legalism get to you. 66 books, 44 authors. Uh, let's see what I want to bring out here. Uh, there was about a 400-year gap between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And during that time, they discovered 75 more books. And when the uh, Jewish people and the uh, uh, monks at Nicaea, they had the Nicaea Council, got together to study these, and they rejected all 75. They selected 66 books to go in the Bible. Because 
they referenced Jesus. Jesus quoted some of the other books, and the other books referenced Jesus and his miracles. The 75 that they turned down was like the book of Larry, where I told them what a good guy I was and how I saw Jesus one time and all this. It's like a little autobiography. They didn't think it belonged in the Bible because it didn't add anything to the Bible. The Catholic Church then, some of those were written in Latin, and the Catholic Church chose 11 of those books during that 400 years of silence, put it in their book, the Douay version of the Bible, and that's why the Catholics did their service in Latin for years. Nobody could read Latin. Nobody could understand it but the priests. It was only years ago that they translated everything into English. So there's an English version of it. Uh, so there's some 75 books out there that are not in the Bible that were written by, quote, Bible people. Now the numbers mean a lot. They say there's 66 books in the Bible. That number means something. Every number in the Bible means something. Every color in the Bible means something. Every direction in the Bible means something. When the children of Israel left Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea. What direction did the wind come from? East. An east wind is always a cool, chilling, wintry wind. And that word in the Red Sea, the walls indicates they were frozen or congealed. I, I picture it as a kind of a big tub of jello where the water was up there kind of shaking, but you were walking through it on dry land. But it means congealed. Then when they got through and Pharaoh's army came after them, what direction did the wind come from? And it melted down when Pharaoh's army got out there. All of these mean the thing. Isaiah says, Why art thou fallen, O Lucifer, son of the morning? He said, I've been out walking up and down and to and fro. Up and down, to and fro. Everybody walks in the way of the cross. And he said, I will mount my throne in the throne of another. Why? Because God's kingdom. And to lay down in the universe is in the north. And that's where Lucifer wanted to be. He wanted his kingdom. He wanted to take over. I can get into a lot of stuff and show you what. I can show you how Lucifer is going to lose his battle at Armageddon. And I might tonight. I'm just hitting tidbits. I'm not going to uh, say a lot of this stuff because it's in the scripture. You can look it up yourself. If you have any questions, be happy to answer it. Uh, let me see some of my notes, but I just said jot them down and can't read them right. I bet him. I don't have that. I bet him on the day she reads this. Turn to Isaiah 29. Let's see about that. I made some notes on scriptures, but I didn't make notes on what those scriptures were. Isaiah 29. Isaiah 14, it talks about Lucifer, how, how it will fall on the Lucifer. 29. Isaiah 14. Made a mistake. It's not the only one that I want. Anyway, somebody give me the scripture. I'll let you tell me what it is. What it says, Whom does he teach doctrine and whom does he give knowledge? Those that are weak from the breast, drawn from the lips, the line must be upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept. What scripture is that? You know? Uh, we should do right up front. Anyway, line upon line, we receive it line upon line. This is where I'm going to start drawing for you. 
because a line in the Bible represents theory. A line in the Bible represents theory. It's Isaiah 28.10. Maybe that's what I wanted to vote instead of 29. I just made a quick note. Isaiah 28.10. 9 and 10. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. My whole purpose of teaching you tonight is that you don't just get saved and wait your turn to die. There is work to do, and the Bible tells you what you need to do. He teaches you this word line upon line. How many books in the Bible? 66. 66. 66 lines. All the way across there. Those are theories. Every book in the Bible has a, a principle, has a line of theory to it. What is set up for. If you misunderstand that, this line is going to go crossways. And that's where you get your conflicts, is when the lines don't line up. 66 lines, line upon line, line upon line. How do I get to where I want to go? Uh, Bible says there's a, in Corinthians, there's a glory of the sun and glory of the moon and glory of the stars and each one differs from a star. Each one differs from another in glory. You with me on that? The word glory means to think, means the mind of Christ. There are two glories in the Bible. There's a kabod glory, which is humility glory. That's the one when we get on our knees and, and we beg for forgiveness and we cry and we moan and we snot all over the altar. And, and that's our humility glory. When the shepherds were in their field, that humility glory is what shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. The other glory is Shekinah. That means exaltation glory. Now humility glory always goes this way. I'm drawing this because you said you get it line upon line. I want you to see the lines. Exaltation glory is this way. What do you see? The cross. Now then, as we start going through this, if you think about Jesus on the cross, this is his right hand here. This is his left hand. I may get into the tabernacle because it was set up into the corner of the cross. And when Jesus rose to see the, to go to the Father, where did he go? He ascended to where? The right hand. You always ascend on the right. You always descend. On the left. So let's talk about this for just a minute. There's a brother named Jacob. He left to get away from his brother Esau and he went to a place called Padanaram. Padanaram. And if you stop there to spend the night, and I'll tell you the story, then I'll tell you what it means, because you've got to say, why? Why? He stayed there to spend the night. Remind me to go back to Genesis 1-1, when I finish with this. I told you I was going to be going all over, because I want to hit a lot of little things for you. He spent there to spend the night, so he got a stone. And he laid it down and he made a pillow to it. He got a rock. 
Who is our rock? Christ. What does that mean? He joined his mind to Christ. You with me on that? He's telling us a principle here that he's laid out for us. Laid his on his mind to Christ. Let this mind be in you. <coughs> and that night he had a dream. And what's that dream called? We refer to it as Jacob's ladder. And he saw angels going up. What side did they go up on? They went up this way. And he saw angels coming down. Come down that way. And he saw lines down through here. The Bible doesn't tell you how many lines, but I can tell you how many because it explains it somewhere else. In the parable of the sower, he went out and sowed seed. And some fell in stony ground. That ground he's talking about is your heart. When somebody teaches you something about the Bible and you reject it, that's your stony ground. And others did. Other, others thought up. And then others grew on up to a hundredfold. Thirtyfold, sixtyfold, ninetyfold. Some of you in here tonight are going to reject everything I got to say. Some of you tonight is going to take some of it and say, hmm, that's pretty good. I think I'll stick with that. I'll hold on to that one. You may be 60-fold. Some of you are going to leave it here and say, I want to learn a whole lot more about that. And you're going to want to grow to 100-fold. So there's a 100-fold here. These angels going up and down on this ladder. Now, remember, it's a spiritual thing. So when he was trying to describe it, he said, all I can think of is it looked like a ladder. It went from earth to heaven. Earth to heaven. Angels going up, angels coming down. Let's go back to Genesis. Genesis 1, that's a good place to start. When in doubt, In the beginning, God created to have the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Can anybody here tell me the difference between the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost? And if you say they're the same, you're wrong. The Holy Spirit came into existence on this earth in Genesis 1-2. When did the Holy Ghost come? Acts 2. We'll talk about the difference. Maybe. Maybe not tonight. Maybe in a year when I get invited back to teach again. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Here's another principle. God always creates in darkness. Darkness represents humility. And humility goes before the pride. So God always creates in humility, in darkness. When Jesus went to pray in Gethsemane and, and the uh, disciples couldn't stay awake, what time of day was it? The night was dark. He always creates in dark. Look what it says. <coughs> now we have a dark side. We have a spirit. And we're going to call it something else. But I'll walk through those things that we call it in a minute. And the Spirit of God was upon the face of the deep. And God says, let there be light, and there was light. That's a little hell. Have a light. Chapter 5, verse 5. And God called the light day, capital D. That makes it a proper name. And he called the darkness night, capital N. That makes that a proper name. Who is your day light and your night light. Jesus. He did not put the natural light on the earth till when? Verse 15 16. The fourth day. When God creates something, he puts his spirit on that thing before he releases it to the natural. Now you've got to say, what's, what's the ministry 
of the Holy Spirit. Because as we're talking these things in the Bible, you've got to talk, what is their ministry? If I'm talking to Justin, and I'm the pastor, for our purposes, I'm his dad, make this a little simpler. When he's talking to me, I'm his dad. He's my son. When he talks to those kids, he's their dad, they're his kids. When he talks to Gary, that's his granddad. You have a different ministry. You talk to him in a different way. You know, if, you're, if your daughter or son gets in trouble at school, you don't come and yell and scream at me. You take it out. <laughs> you, take, you, you talk to them about it. God has all these compound names. And it's, it's God. There's a Lord, a little, little L-O-R-D. Doesn't have anything to do with it. There's a capital L, little O-R-D. There's a capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And I, when I was younger and I got saved and I was in church, I asked the pastor, I said, what are all these different spellings here? He said, that's just the way they print in the Bible. Every spelling has a way. Now the capital L, O-R-D, capital L, capital O, capital D, is translated Jehovah. And there are seven Jehovah compound names. And each of those names, he's filling a position to give us a complete picture. Seven's a number of what? Perfection. Completion. He's given us a perfect picture of himself through his names. All the Jehovah names. Okay. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I've got another appointment at 9.30 tonight. There is no way I can stay here past 9. <laughs> I just didn't get paid attention. <laughs> uh, so in, in the cha uh, chapter 2, verse uh, four, 15 and 16, then that's when he made the sun and the moon. He had already put his spiritual light there. But what is God's spiritual life? When the Spirit of God there, the ministry, the ministry of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, is conviction. And people misuse that all the time. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. No, you didn't. You're already filled with it because the Holy Spirit's on the present. If you go to church, it's there. If you go to a restaurant, it's there. If you go into a bar, it's there. Gary, when you were drinking, did you ever go in the bar and have a drink and almost feel guilty about it? <laughs> That's that conviction. The Spirit of God, is the ministry of it, is conviction. And he put that conviction spirit of the whole world before he ever put anything in the world. That's fun, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Did you know that, Don? No, you say no. If, if you, you go ahead and lie to me if you want to, say, yeah. Because <laughs> you didn't know it before, because I just made that up. No, I didn't make that up. <clears throat> so here we go. So the Holy Spirit is the universal spirit, omnipresent spirit. So what is the Holy Ghost? They were in the upper room. They were talking, they were waiting for something to happen. Somebody said, boy, I gotta go home. My wife's fixing lunch, I'm gonna be late. Somebody said, I gotta go work in the fields and bits some grain. Somebody else says, I'm thirsty. I'm gonna go get something to drink and eat. And pretty soon the people that weren't committed, they scattered. And then the Bible says when they the remaining ones were all in one accord. They were staying there for something. That's right. Amen. That's when the Coburn fire and tongues came down and filled them with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you something that took me years to find out and figure out. The omnipresent, the, omnipre the Spirit of God is omnipresent. It's everywhere. That's your conviction spirit. Jesus says it's expedient I go away. And if I go away, I'm going to send a comfort. And he's going to come and he's going to lead and guide and direct you into all truth. Not just some truth, not just teach you a little bit here or there. He's going to lead you to all truth. And the Holy Ghost came. 
And I'll tell you something, probably not anybody in Ava knows and understands, except you and I get me talking to right now. The Holy Ghost is the personal presence. Hey! When he comes. He comes and dwells in you. Mm -hmm. And he fills you. And he leads you and he guides you and he directs you. That's the Holy Ghost. It's not just the spirit that's wandering around out here. That spirit is everywhere. That's the omnipresent spirit of God. Everybody's got that. And that spirit is working to convict people. That's why we can have an altar call. Somebody can be standing there during an altar call and just shaking and crying because the conviction is on them. And somebody else is fighting it, and they're not doing anything. It'd be great if every time you had a service, everybody would come to the altar. But the Holy Spirit doesn't work that way. He starts putting the conviction on you. And when times come, and you've heard the word, you're going to say, yes, I want to be saved. Yes, I want to know more about Jesus. Yes, I want to grow to a hundredfold, not just thirtyfold. I just don't want to get saved and wait to die. I want to do something while I'm living here. Let's see if there's anything else on that chapter I want to tell you. No. So God always creates where? In the darkness. In darkness. And what does he put on his creation before he puts anything else? Spirit. His omnipresent spirit. And what's the difference between the omnipresent spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Ghost? The, omnipre the Holy Spirit is what? Omnipresent. omnipresent. The Holy Ghost is presence. personal presence. He told Moses four times how to build this ark. And it had to be perfect because it was a picture of Jesus. Now then, let's talk about this. God's got a balance. I'm just, I'm not preaching sermons. I'm just going through stuff right now. Okay? We have our good times. Let's just put happy here. Over here would be sad. Happy times. Things are up. Things are going good. Good job. Good pay. My boss likes me. Everything is going well. <laughs> Sad time is when it turns upside down. Mm -hmm. You have your wet season and your dry season. Wet season is when you're being watered. You're being planted. You're being cultivated. You're growing. You're learning. You're learning to study. And you really appreciate life and appreciate God. And the dry season is you wake up one day and your world is turned upside down. You got a phone call. Your friend's being killed or your husband or your wife is divorcing you or you've got checks on drawn up the bank. Or you, all of these things. And the dry season, you try to pray and it seems like the prayer stops right there. Don't go any higher than that. Here's your mountain season. And here's your valley season. Everybody wants to live on the mountain. But you can't live on the mountain because there's valleys between each mountain and you've got to go through them. Paul, Paul said, I've learned to be exalted and I've learned to be abased. I've learned to live on the mountain. I've learned to live in the valley. Doesn't matter to me. If that's where God wants me, that's where I'm going to be and I'm going to be happy with where he wants me. If uh, anything that uh, you could put there, here's a good one I'll put, hot. This is your hot season. This is your cold season. Hot season, things are going good. God's blessing you. Boy, you just feel the spirit. You can't wait to get to church. You can't wait to read, uh, read your Bible, study. And your cold season. Your friends turn against you. 
you got fired from your job, you got all these things going against you as you're praying and nobody's answering your prayers, nobody's hearing your prayers, and it's cold and it's miserable. And the Bible says, pray that I don't come back in your winter season. Because you see, here is where we backslide. This is where your blessings are and everything is going good. This is where our blessings are. It's a different blessing. But since we don't know how to use it and how to do it, it becomes a, God doesn't like me anymore. Gary doesn't let me preach anymore. He doesn't refer to, he doesn't let me teach Sunday school. He never invites me to stay after church for COVID. Nobody at that church likes me anymore. I think I'll just quit. So you quit coming to church. You backslid in your winter season. And the Bible says, you better pray I don't come back. Not in the winter. Pray that I don't come back in winter. It means your winter. Remember, this is your growth we're talking about. Not the church's growth, not Ava's growth, not the United States growth. This is your personal growth. Your heart. Your mind. So you can't sit and say, well, so-and-so sitting over there, and they never pray, they never do anything. That's their growth. If they don't want to go more than 30-fold or one-fold, that's okay. I want to go 100. The fact that you don't want to go with me doesn't keep me from going. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So we have these, we just go up and down, and we are sitting here. I tell you what, when I started learning this stuff, putting the lines to it, I just move all over the house. So we come here, we start here at the brazen altar, and that's called the altar or the brazen altar. That's where the sacrifices were made in the Old Testament tabernacle. And we start ascending. And we go up to the right hand. And then we come here. This is hearing. This is doing. Hearing and doing. You come up. You go down. You come up. You go down. You come up. You go down. In all of these things, it could be anything from studying to prayer to forgiveness. How many times are you supposed to forgive? 70 times 7. 70 times 7. That's at one fold. Now you go to two fold. How many times you got to give? <laughs> Starts all over again. <laughs> so how many times you going to forgive them for that? Before you finally get up here where you're supposed to be. So you go up and you go down. You go up and you go down. And you hear the word. You do the word. Hear the word and you do the word. You hear the word and you do the word. Ezekiel says, I was praying and I saw the Lord. Looks to me like it was a wheel in a wheel. Mm -hmm. hmm. You see it? Mm -hmm. Paul says, I've run the race. I've finished the course. He said, I've finished my course. Not the course. I've finished my course. You've got a course. You've got a course. You've got a course. You've got one. You've got a course. You've got to run your own course. I cannot run your course for you. I can't get to heaven for you. You run your own course. When you run your own course, what did I say? Uh, a line map theory. Did I tell you what a circle meant? Experience. So when you take this line and turn it into a circle, it becomes your circle of experience. So we have our circle of experience in exaltation, a circle of experience in humility, at the one-fold, at the two-fold, at the three-fold, all the way to the hundred-fold. Does anybody think this is exciting besides me? Mm -hmm. Am I just preaching to me? Because I want to hear it again. I love what God has done and what he's laid out. He's a wheel in a wheel. Paul says, I've run the race. I've finished my course. In other words, I've finished my experience. I've finished my wheel. Mm -hmm. 
Norma, you like that? I don't have my glasses on. I, I couldn't hear it. <laughs> okay. Let's see what I'm going to do here. Throw something on you. And I'm going to talk about women preachers. Uh, First Corinthians 15, it talks about the star glory, the moon glory, and the sun glory, and says, each one differs from the other in glory. What did I say the glory was? The thinking. A one-fold glory is here. A 30-fold glory is here. A 60-fold glory is here. So every glory is different. Every thinking is different. We will shine based on our thinking and how much we committed ourselves to God and Jesus and do His works. Coming in and sweeping the floor of the church is not works. The works He's talking about is in your heart. Read Song of Solomon. That whole picture is how a bride tried to build her relationship with the bridegroom. So, and He called he called her horse. It's for your you're beautiful like a horse. Well, would you would you continue that compliment? Of course you would if you were a man. You know what a horse in, in Scripture means? Strength and courage. You're beautiful because you have strength and you have courage to go on when nobody else wants to go on. That's what the bridegroom has to have. You've got to have the courage to walk on even if you're walking by yourself. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place, I'll come again and receive it myself. And when I am there, you may be also. Each mansion that we have is going to be a glory mansion. Now, I'm not going to get into it tonight, but I'm going to tell you to go back and search up and look at Revelation. Saints. Some of the saints were wearing white robes. Some had white robes with crowns. Some had white robes with, with uh, uh, other. Forget what I call them now. Others were wearing white raiment. The bridegroom wears white linen. These are all different types of clothing. Not everybody is going to go to heaven when you die. We have talked about that this afternoon. If you read the obituaries in the paper, everybody went to be the Lord this week. Mm -hmm. uh, my Bible says they didn't. So, what do you want to wear when you're resurrected out of here? You want to be wearing a white robe, white raiment, or white linen? There's some special privileges for the white linen people. One of them is when Jesus comes back. Who's coming back with him? The bride. And what's she wearing? White linen. She's not wearing white robes or white raiment. Those are lesser degree. I, am I talking degrees of uh, rewards in heaven? Yeah, I am. Baptist called it. I got another star in the crown. Got another star. That's a degree of reward. But our clothing is what we're clothed. It's a spiritual clothing. And when you wear white robes, you receive the light. When you wear white raiment, you receive the light. When you wear white linen and you become one with Jesus Christ, the bridegroom, you give the light. And our job is to teach. Because it says, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Of those in heaven, those in earth, those under the earth. That means hell. Somebody's got to go to hell to teach those people so that those things will bow. So that they can eventually, somewhere down the road, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I thought you was going to hit on it this morning. What do you think the Hebrew children in the fiery furnace was? A picture of the bride. They were put in there, and the heat was seven times hotter. And it didn't send them, and they didn't keep any smell or odor on their clothes. 
Now, when, when God made Adam, male and female, he made the animals. And then Adam, male and female, named the animals. Name means nature. The bear got its nature because it's a bear. The lion got its nature because it's a lion. The monkey got its nature because they called it a monkey. Name means nature. Satan goes around imitating that like a roaring lion. He wants to be a lion, but he can't be. He goes about like a roaring lion. Name means nature. I saw a little cartoon one day. Had all the animals lined up. And Adam was naming them. These two little creatures there, and one of them looked at the other and says, Platypus. Platypus? I told you they had to use all the good names before they got there. <laughs> 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 but, but name means nature. So what they call us, the, that name, what we call the animal, is their nature. That's why the lion can lay down by the lamp in eternity because those are spiritual things those are spiritual animals and they're under our control what time is it? is it 9 o'clock yet? <laughs> little fast what time is it? 10, 15 after 7 15 after 7? Uh -huh. I'll stop I uh I just want to tell you, everything in this Bible is a picture of Jesus. Everything in this Bible is set up to point you to Jesus. Each individual verse, each chapter, each book. There are 66 principles, line upon line, line upon line, and the precepts. And the line is theory, and the circle is experience. So as we walk this line of theory, it becomes our circle. We make the circle, we make the circle, we make the circle. I wish I could stand here and teach you a good night, but I won't. I'm, I'm sorry I went 10 minutes over. But sometimes you just get excited and you want to share the word. I would like to keep it just a couple more minutes because I want to see if we might learn anything. Did anybody learn anything tonight that you didn't know? Did you see the Bible in a different way tonight than you seen it? Yes. Brett, what'd you see? What'd you understand? Uh, just a lot of, makes a lot more sense, comes together quite a bit about Good. the way the lives and if you get crossed up, you know, in one chapter of the Bible with another, that it's not your, it's yeah. not the way it's supposed to be, it's just your understanding of it. It's you your understanding of it. Yeah. out and, Wanda, I love your teaching. I'm just amazed that you ever stood. Did you learn anything tonight? Yeah, the, the world has a phrase, and they go, mind blown. And I kept thinking of that. It's like, oh, I never thought of that. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you so, did a wonderful job. Well, thank you. Don, did you learn anything tonight? What stood out in your mind? Anything special? You just had a line, like you were saying, that, that there was different... Um, different folds for each line again, yeah. but mostly like Brett said, you know, that it's not just the Bible contradicting itself, it's our understanding of it. That's right. Now, it says that we get a line up on line, here a little and there a little. You may have gotten something tonight you don't understand, and it may take five years or ten years, and somebody's going to come into church one night and preach and say something, you'll say, that's it. I finally understood what he said five <coughs> years ago. Because you get it line upon line. No, did you learn anything tonight? It was very interesting, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Linda, what'd you learn? Well, the difference between the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit, as yes, you said. Yes, me too. And that makes sense. Me too. And we have a hard time. We think the, the two are interchangeable, and they're the same thing, just called by a different name. But I can see there the point you made. That makes yeah. sense. Good, mm -hmm. good. And you see it all the time on TV and everything. They're talking about, they, they mix them up. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, everything. Jason? Sir. 
What did you learn about it? Anything stand out? I've been sitting here the whole time thinking I wish I had brought a pencil to write all this down, and I've decided I'm just going to invite you for coffee one morning. We're going to go out and get coffee because I'm going to have to have coffee for a couple of years. I wish I wrote this down so that I could go back and look it up and yeah. study it. You know, I, I I listen to people say things, and that's great, but I've got to know for myself. I've got to look this up. That's you know what, what you I mean? That's what you're supposed to do. But it, it was yeah. I'm, I'm just like one to poof. Yeah, Makes you want to see more, don't Very good, very good. Margaret, you heard anything or yeah. find anything interesting? Yeah, I did. I was like Linda. I, I, I didn't understand about the difference between the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. I knew about them, but I really didn't understand that one was the difference in the ministry and the other one was personal. How many of you knew that God always creates in darkness? He always creates in darkness. That's why he helps you. When he makes a way where there's no way, it's at your lowest point. You're over here on this left side descending. Mm -hmm. It's your lowest point. It's your night season. And uh, it's uh, and the Bible is full of those things. Now, remember, you can have a season in a minute. You, you can be having a day season. You're just great, old thing. And somebody come up and say something to you, or a car pull out in front of you like that, and all of a sudden, <laughs> You're over here. <laughs> that's, that's why you need to understand one of the things we discussed when I was going to college, uh, Hebrew history, was is there a, uh, were the days 24 hour days, were they thousand year days? What well, were they when God did his creative thing? We might talk about that one time and see if, if, if somebody's interested. But I wanted to just show you tonight that there's some things in the Bible that people just overlook. They just take for granted and they teach it and they teach it wrong. But the Bible tells us it's up to us to get it right individually. And that's what I, I want you to do. I want you to leave here tonight with a new vision, a new dedication, a new purpose. And I just want us all to do all that we can. Now remember it's in the heart. You can go out here and mow this yard three times a week. It doesn't help you. Then have to get heaven. Mm -hmm. All right. Please understand that. Mm -hmm. Brother Gary, if you come up and take over and lead us in prayer, what? What did you learn tonight? You're the pastor. Oh, I didn't know anything. <laughs> 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 Just like back in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I listened a little more than I said yeah. I did in high school, but. A lot of things, the, the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit uh, uh, gave me a, a new insight and, and several things that just had never, I had never really looked at in the way. Right and left. No, I just had Colors. Four colors I'll ever see. Jesus has four colors. That's why you're prejudiced. Red, yellow, black, and white. If you don't like black people, it's because you don't like the black part of Jesus. You better find out what that part is. Because they were made in his image. So you, there's no end to it. There's no end to it. And what you know, what, you, what you're given, much you're given, much you're required. I've been in Bible classes before, and the teacher says something, and somebody in the room says, oh, Wish I hadn't heard that. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's in there now. I got to do something with it. But Brother Gary, come on up and take over if you will. Thank you for letting me come tonight. Uh, I love you.
think for experience, I know that there's people here that have a lot better understanding of the word than I do. There are people here that have much more education and much more study. But it, it, it has given me a desire to dig deeper. To dig deeper. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. Hope that this can be continued at a later date somewhere. And we can, like Jason said, I need to have coffee and talk. The only problem is, how long can coffee go on? <laughs> <laughs> Larry and I go way back a long ways. Not quite a hundred years, but close. And I have to say this that he and his, his wife and Christian, we really appreciate Christian as well. They have made a tremendous difference in our other church. Amen. 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 Uh, and that don't come from tonight only. That just, you know, when when he considered becoming a part of this church, he said, I want to have coffee, <laughs> have breakfast. And we did, and uh, we have renewed a, a lot of old, maybe things we didn't even need to renew. <laughs> but, uh, Tonight, I have uh, probably seen my my friend in a different light. Amen. So, hopefully that somewhere down, I don't know what, don't know how, that we can benefit even more from his vast knowledge than what we have already. So, thank you all for coming tonight. Larry's wife has made... Uh, cookies and we have a little coffee back there if you want to fellowship a little bit before you go home if you don't God bless you take a couple cookies to go she made ten dozen so we'll have some and you certainly don't need any <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's no wonder she that's down to that <laughs> it made her sick making so many cookies well, I, can make them. Yeah. <laughs> I wish she could have been here tonight with us it's a I have enjoyed the last, how long has it been, a month, month and a half, that we I, we have renewed our acquaintance from many years ago. So I'm not going to say no more, we'll just be dismissed, and uh, hopefully in not too distant future we can learn more of what we've, because I think, I think he has done tonight, has like Wanda said, blow her mind. He throwed so much stuff out there. I don't think you can comprehend it. I don't think there's anyone here that can. So anyway, let's be dismissed.